For those of you who are taking communicative abilities in English, I've had a chance to take a look at some of your work. Some of you have been asking for uh, some feedback on primarily your problem statement. And I want to review again what we ought to consider when we're developing our problem statement. I want to draw your attention first in Canvas under week 14, I'm sorry, week 13, the problem statement and thesis statement uh, page here, the assignment. So this is going to be the form in which I'd like for you to, to submit this assignment, uh, beginning with the, uh, the problem statement and then extracting from the problem statement the indirect question, followed by the direct question, and then the thesis statement. Now, before we get into uh, the thesis statement, we want to focus on developing a problem statement that's going to basically include three parts or three sections. First, it should in include a, a topic. The second, it should involve an indirect question. And number three, it should also include the significance. Now, I think most of the, the problem statements that I've seen so far, they've been missing the significance. So I would use the prompt that we talked about in class. We will all begin with something like, I wish to learn more about, and then you're going to present your topic. Remember, your topic should be general. It's a general idea that then leads into the indirect question because I want to know and then you would choose one of these key question words most of us are going to choose either how or why but when is a possibility and where is also a possibility probably not a which question word or a what question word so think of the question word how or why for example followed by a subject why teachers or why students or why administrators or why parents or whatever subject you think is most appropriate on Friday yesterday we looked at some examples of how to use adjectives and relative clauses to make our subjects more specific so you might want to keep that in mind as you're developing your indirect question for the problem statement so here we have because I want to know how something. Now the key idea, the key thing to consider when you're developing your indirect question is to make it more specific. If you have a topic, for example, using the word motivation, the indirect question is probably not going to include the word motivation. It's going to be some aspect that relates to motivation in the classroom or in the English language learning classroom. So think of different aspects of the English language learning classroom that relates to your problem. For example, maybe you focus on one or a couple of uh, the language skills, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Now, we don't want to focus on all of those. Maybe you focus on one of those, or perhaps you want to focus on listening and speaking or conversational speech or maybe you want to focus on reading and writing. That's a possibility. But you could also focus on one of those. You could focus just on listening comprehension. You could focus on only reading strategies. You could focus on only writing and, let's say, feedback or assessment. Okay, so these are all different ways that you can think about the indirect question about how can you narrow down uh, the, the topic that you have stated here prior, I wish to learn more about, how can you narrow that down here in this section, the indirect question. Beyond the four skills, you can also focus on grammar or vocabulary or pronunciation or interactional patterns. You could focus on critical thinking, cognitive learning strategies. Okay, these are all examples of ways that you could narrow down your topic remember the indirect question you need to think about the problem there's a reason for us to to think about the problem from the very beginning what is the problem the problem is what someone is not doing something or someone is doing something and that is causing a problem so it's important to relate the indirect question that you are posing here number one that it's specific enough and number two that it 
it relates to the, the problem overall. Now, the third part of the problem statement that many of you are missing is the significance. This is the why. This is the, the purpose or the reason of your essay. I think it's a good time now in the on the title page at the bottom, I would go ahead and include the target audience and the purpose of your essay because these two very much relates to the significance that you're going to list in the problem statement. So you might say, in order to, everyone will have this connector, in order to, now think about what's the purpose, what's the problem, what's the issue, what issue are you addressing in your essay, to whom are you writing your essay, okay, and and why, what's, what's the purpose? Just imagine that you're going to take this essay and give it to someone in hopes that you are persuading them or encouraging them to either do something or think differently about, about uh, a particular problem. Okay, this is why we call this a problem statement because everything leads it up to the significance. It's like, why are you looking and addressing this indirect question? Why would you give this essay to someone for what purpose? So that's what I would think about when you're developing this third section of the problem statement, what I'm calling the, the significance. I'm also putting here, or the problem being addressed, but uh, the, the point here is the significance that you are including at the end of your problem statement is what you're going to develop in greater detail in the introduction paragraph later on. Okay, when you're developing your, your three to five sentences that connect the hook with the thesis statement in your introduction paragraph, that information, the what, the how, the why, the when, the where of the problem will, is going to come directly from this idea or vice versa if you want to think of it in the, in the opposite. Whatever you develop in your introduction paragraph, you're stating here in more general terms in the significance at the end of your problem statement. So remember that the problem statement includes three parts, the topic, the indirect question, and the significance. And I would use this prompt that I've provided here in uh, this assignment in Canvas. I wish to learn more about than your topic because I want to know how or why. Choose one of the, the question words here. This is the prompt I would use. And then the in order to connector to introduce the significance. Now, once you've, had, once you've developed your problem statement, it's simply copy and paste the indirect question from that, from the problem statement. So you're going to begin with, I want to know. These are, these are going to be the words that begin your indirect question. And then whatever you have completed there, you'll copy and paste that here just below the problem statement. So you have the problem statement. Then just below, you'll have the indirect question. And then the direct question, just a, a grammatical exercise to convert an indirect question to a direct question. And then the thesis statement. Remember, the thesis statement is the one sentence general idea about your essay that answers your direct question. Every essay that you write addresses one central question. So... The reason for developing the problem statement, you could look at it as kind of a providing context in how you develop this one question that will remain the purpose or the main idea that relates to your overall essay. All right, so I hope this helps, guys. Um, again, as I mentioned, I would go ahead and include the target audience and the purpose of uh, include that in the title page. Of course, if any of this changes, just continue to work in your Word document and Teams and keep that up to date. Make those changes. And um, this is what we want to try to focus on here. If anyone needs to resubmit, they, they can do so in Canvas. If you've already submitted your, can your assignment, what I would recommend doing, if possible, is to receive feedback from me in the Word document and Teams before you submit assignment. Uh, an assignment in uh, Canvas. That's what I would uh, try to do so that you can take into consideration my feedback before submitting to to Canvas. Uh, before I, I uh, close this video, I think I'm going to modify slightly this page to provide a little bit more information here if you need to, if you need to go back to this 
Okay, so I just updated a page in uh, Canvas. Again, same information we've, we've been talking about, but I wanted to present some examples. And so if you go into the problem statement and thesis statement two assignment from, uh, from last week, you'll see here some examples. Again, I'm revisiting the idea of a problem statement. I have uh, an example here taking you from the prompt that we've talked about to the indirect question, to the direct question, to the thesis statement. I have an example also of a, a thesis statement that relates directly to the problem statement. So take a, a look at this example. I've also included links here with additional information. Okay, if you need it, uh, you can refer to this as well. And uh, so I wanted to share that with you. Please take this into consideration as you're developing your problem statement. Let me know if uh, you have any uh, requests for feedback. I'll be happy to take a look at it, and we'll see everybody on Wednesday.